Hey guys, Miss Erin here. Um, we are going to read another chapter of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. So yesterday we read chapter four and Harry found out through Hagrid that he's actually a wizard. So let's continue. Chapter five, Diagon Alley. Harry awoke early the next morning. Although he could tell it was daylight, he kept his eyes tight shut. It was a dream, he told himself firmly. I dreamed a giant called Hagrid came to tell me I was going to a school for wizards. When I open my eyes, I'll be home in my cupboard. There suddenly was a loud tapping noise. And there, uh, and there's Aunt Petunia knocking on the door, Harry thought, his heart sinking. But he still didn't open his eyes. It had been such a great dream. Tap, tap, tap. All right, Harry mumbled, I'm getting up. He sat up and Hagrid's heavy coat fell off of him. The hut was full of sunlight and the storm was over and Hagrid himself was asleep on the collapsed sofa and there was an owl wrapping its claw on the window, a newspaper held in its beak. And here's a picture of Hagrid sleeping on the couch. Harry scrambled to his feet, so happy he felt as though a large balloon was swelling inside him. He went straight to the window and jerked it open. The owl swooped in and dropped a newspaper on top of Hagrid, who did not wake up. The owl then fluttered onto the floor and began to attack Hagrid's coat. Don't do that. Harry tried to wave the owl out of the way, but it snapped its beak fiercely at him and carried him on the savaging coat. Hagrid, said Harry loudly, there's an owl. Pay him, grunted Hagrid on the sofa. What? He wants paying for delivering the paper. Look in my pockets. Hagrid's coat seemed to be made of nothing but pockets. Bunches of keys, slug pellets, balls of string, mint humbugs, tea bags. Finally, Harry pulled out a handful of strange looking coins. Give him five nuts, Hagrid said sleepily. Nuts? The little brown ones, bronze ones. Harry counted out five little bronze coins and the owl held out its leg so he could put the money in a little small leather pouch tied to it. Then it flew off through the open window. Hagrid yawned loudly, sat up, and then stretched. Best be off, Harry. Lots to do today. Gotta get you up to London to buy all your stuff for school. Harry was turning over the wizard's coins and looking at them. He had just thought of something which made him feel as though the happy balloon inside of him got a puncher. Um, Hagrid? Hmm, said Hagrid, who was pulling on his boots. I haven't got any money. You heard Uncle Vernon last night. He won't pay for me to go and learn magic. Oh, don't worry about that, said Hagrid. Do you think your parents didn't leave you anything? Well, if their house was destroyed. Nah, they didn't keep their gold in their house, boy. Nah, the first stop for us is Gringotts, the wizard's bank. Have a sausage. They're not so bad cold. And I wouldn't say no to a bit of your birthday cake, neither. Wizards have banks? Well, just the one, Gringotts, run by goblins. Harry dropped off, uh, dropped the bit of sausage he was holding. Goblins? Yeah, so you'd be mad if you tried to rob them. I'll tell you that. You never mess with goblins, Harry. Gringotts is the safest place in the world for anything you want to keep safe, except for maybe Hogwarts. As a matter of fact, I gotta visit Gringotts today anyways for Dumbledore business. Hagrid drew himself proudly. He usually gets me to do important stuff for him. Fetching, you know, getting things from Gringotts. He knows he can trust me. You got everything? All right, let's go then. Harry followed Hagrid out to the rock. The sky was quite clear now and the sea gleamed in the sunlight. The boat Uncle Vernon had hired was still there with lots of water in the bottom after the storm. How did you get here? Harry asked. Flew, said Hagrid. You flew? Well, yeah, but we'll go back in this. I'm not supposed to use magic now that I got you. They settled down in the boat, Harry still staring at Hagrid, trying to imagine him flying. Hmm, seems the same to row though, Hagrid said, giving Harry another sideways look. Hmm, if I were to say, speed things up a little bit, would you mind not mentioning it at Hogwarts? Of course not, said Harry, eager to see more magic. Hagrid pulled out the pink umbrella again, tapped it twice on the side of the boat, and then they sped off towards the land. 
Why would you be mad to try to rob Gringotts? Harry asked. Ah, spells, enchantments, said Hagrid, unfolding his newspaper as he spoke. They say there's a dragon guarding the high security vaults, and then they got, gotta find your way. Gringotts is hundreds of miles under London, you see, deep under the underground. You'd die of hunger trying to get out if you didn't manage to get your hands on something. Harry sat and thought about this while Hagrid read the newspaper, The Daily Prophet. Harry had learned from Uncle Vernon that people liked to be left alone when they did this, but it was very difficult. He'd never had so many questions in his whole life. I'll show you guys a little pink umbrella picture here. <clears throat> uh, ministry of magic messing things up as usual, Hagrid mut <clears throat> muttered, turning the page. There's a Ministry of Magic, Harry asked, before he could top, stop himself. Of course, said Hagrid. They wanted Dumbledore for minister, of course, but he'd never leave Hogwarts. So old Cornelius Fudge got the job. Bungler if there ever was one. So he pelts Dumbledore with owls every morning, asking for advice. But what does a Ministry of Magic do? Well, their main job is to keep the muggles... Uh, from finding out there's witches and wizards up and down the country. Why? Why? Blimey, Harry. Everybody would be wanting magical solutions to their problems. Now we're best left alone. At this moment, the boat bumped gently into the harbor wall. Hagrid folded up his newspaper and they clambered up the stone steps to the street. Passerby stared at a lot at Hagrid as they walked through the little town to the station. Harry could not only blame them, not only was Hagrid uh, twice as tall as anybody, he kept pointing at perfectly ordinary things like parking meters and saying loudly, See that, Harry? These things muggles dream up. Hmm. Hagrid, said Harry, paint, uh, panting a bit as he ran to keep up. Did you say there's dragons at Gringotts? Well, so they say, said Hagrid. Crikey, I'd love a dragon. You'd like one? Well, I've, ever, I've wanted one ever since I was a kid. Here we go. They had reached the station. There was a train to London in five minutes time. Hagrid, who did, not, uh, who did not understand muggle money, as he called it, gave the notes to Harry so he could buy their tickets. People stared more than ever on the train. Hagrid took up two seats and sat knitting what looked like a canary yellow circus tent. Still got your letter, Harry? He asked. Counting stitches, Harry took the parchment envelope out of his pocket. Good. There's a list of everything you need. All right. We will stop there and continue uh, on the next video.